Movement in Apex Legends feels impossible, partially because the movement is based off of hitting buttons in a specific order with insanely fast timing. But a major reason why movement feels impossible is because your button layout is dog shit. You see, on controller, you basically have two thumbs to hit all of these buttons, which as you can imagine, is very difficult, especially if you need to do something like this while moving this. Oh, and pulling this all while someone is shooting at you. Holy shit, okay. That's why you need a button layout that's going to allow you to fly your fingers all over the controller without compromising your aim or sanity. Today, I'm gonna to be covering each button layout and help you find the best one so that your hands will have more time to focus on the timing and stress less about reaching across the controller and smashing 10 buttons with that one thumb. Our first layout is the default layout. It's not the worst, but it's definitely not close to being the best. Every input requires you to move your thumbs off the sticks, and that limits you to one press at a time. Crouch spamming is near impossible with the default layout, especially while shooting. You're basically forced to stop tracking so that you can crouch. Then you end up coming off target. If you don't quickly uncrouch, you end up crouch walking really slow. This just doesn't affect your crouching mid-fight though. They're also crouching in and out of cover, like jiggle peeking. Basic movements like wall jumping are possible, but they feel very clunky because you can't properly turn your legend's head to more accurately line yourself up with where you're going. And advanced movements like super glides are basically impossible. The default layout gets an overall movement rating of one out of 10. If you can avoid it, you should never use this layout. Layout number two is button jumper. The only change is that we move the jump button to the left bumper, and even though this is a small change, it makes a massive improvement to the feel of movement. Button jumper now allows you to jump while looking around. So basic movements like wall jumps, wall pushes, fatigue wall jumps, they feel super smooth. And because jump is the last input for most mechanics that you're gonna be using, you'll be able to easily look around while making those jump inputs. However, the crouch is still set to the faceplate button, meaning that we can't input a crouch easily, making crouch spams still super difficult and ineffective. But with jump being moved to a different finger, we can now jump and input something else, making more complex movements like super glides possible and kind of easy. So button jumper gets an overall movement rating of four out of 10. Layout number three is button puncher. With button puncher, we move crouch to R3 or right thumb stick, giving us the ability to now crouch without removing our thumb off of the stick. For the first time, we are now able to crouch spam and also use hold to crouch if that's an option that you want to go with. However, a big issue with crouching on R3 is that we use it to aim, meaning every time that you crouch while you're shooting, you're tensing your thumb and you're affecting your aim alongside your movement. As well, you still can't jump while doing other inputs, meaning that the only thing that you're really getting out of this is slightly better aim with the ability to crouch spam. Really not all that worth it. Bun Puncher gets an overall movement rating of two out of 10. Layout number four is Evolved. Now Evolved is where movement really starts to get a lot easier. We're gonna be crouching with R3 or our right thumbstick click, and we're gonna be jumping again with the left bumper. This makes every movement mechanic possible. We now have the ability to crouch spam while shooting, even though it's still going to be affecting your aim because you're clicking down on the right stick while shooting, wall jumping is going to be extremely easy because now you can jump around without taking your thumbs off the stick and you can slide without taking your thumb off the stick. But with jump and crouch being on two different buttons, it can feel kind of janky doing a lot of different movement mechanics, especially super glides. Specifically because the right thumbstick, you have to push a lot harder to click it in than you do to click that left bumper. Meaning it can be a little tough timing jumps and crouches at the same time because you have to press them at different pressures. Though with all the upgrades to our movement, I'm more than happy to give Evolved an overall movement rating of 5 out of 10. Layout number five is Grenader. Now, we're not even going to cover this one because it is absolutely useless. You don't even get an upgrade with your movement, so Grenader gets an overall rating of negative 10 out of 10. This is the dumbest thing that I've ever seen in Apex. This shouldn't even be a setting. Layout number six is going to be Ninja. Ninja is easily the best pre-made layout for anyone who doesn't have a custom controller. By moving jump to the left bumper and moving crouch to the right bumper, you can now easily crouch spam while shooting without affecting your aim. As well, slide jumping, wall jumping, super gliding. You can do all of these things all while looking around without moving your thumbs off the sticks. Movement's going to feel significantly smoother and effortless. You're going to have a way easier time building consistency with learning different movement techniques. Although you are going to be crouching with the same finger that you're shooting with, so you might have to crouch with your index finger and then shoot with your middle finger. The overall movement rating that I'm going to be giving Ninja is definitely the highest out of everything else, but still only a measly 6 out of 10. 
Now, obviously six out of 10 isn't all that high of a movement score. And the reason why it's still so low is because there's still two main buttons that we're lifting our thumbs off the sticks. And those are gonna be our interact and our swap weapon. If you follow any of my coaching guides, I always talk about instant sliding, which is when we holster our weapon for faster running speeds and quicker slides. As you become more and more consistent with your movement, you're gonna be using instant slides pretty much every single gunfight and multiple times to fight at that. And instant sliding requires you to hit the swap weapon button two times. And one of those times you have to hold it. So if you're taking your thumb off the stick to hold the button and then tap it quickly, that is a long time of you not aiming around. This is also the same for things like super jumping and interacting with doors and looting. Our interact button is still on the faceplate, which means that every time that we want to go and interact with something, whether it's loot or a zipline or a door, we're still going to have to take our thumb off of the stick and go hit that button. Now, we could easily fix this issue and make small adjustments to our layout by playing on custom settings, but the more that we change our button layout in custom, the harder it's going to be to do other really important things, such as healing, sprinting, punching, changing ammo types, zooming in and out of our scopes, and using our abilities. So we really don't want to be changing the custom layout all that much, because the more you change it for movement, the harder it is to do everything else. So if you're playing on the default controller, I would highly recommend playing on Ninja, as it ranks the highest in our movement score. Now, if you really want to have some of the best movement that you can, you're going to either want to learn how to play Claw Grip, or you can play Normal Grip, but upgrade to a custom built controller. Personally, I play on a controller with four paddles on the back. It allows me to interact, swap or holster my guns, reload, jump and slide all while keeping both of my thumbs on the sticks. And I can do all of that with a default button layout. My current two choices for pro controllers are AIM controllers and Cinch Gaming controllers. AIM, as far as I'm concerned, is the only controller company that has real paddles, plus a ton of other features like mouse click triggers, digital buttons, swappable thumbsticks, and grips on the side of the controller. As well, AIM has a lifetime warranty on all of the modded parts, so if your thumbsticks break, or if your triggers break, or your paddles break, AIM will swap them out completely for free. On another note, Cinch has all of the same features, but they go for back buttons instead of back paddles. Personally, I like paddles more because they're a little bit more comfortable, there's more surface area for my fingers to sit, but back buttons are a little bit clickier and a little bit more responsive. If you're interested in any of these brands that we're partnered with, you can check them out by clicking their links in the description down below and you can save up to 10% off on their controllers. Now, if you do play with a controller that already has back buttons, the best button layout, in my opinion, is just sticking with the default and making sure that you map your face play buttons to those four back paddles. If you only have two back paddles, my best suggestion is making sure that you map your crouch and your jump to your back paddles and your reload and your swap weapon to your bumpers. The reason why you would want your swap and your reload on your bumpers instead of your paddles is because you're going to be using crouch and jump a lot more than you're going to be using swap and reload. With that being said, it's going to also be extremely easy to hit crouch and jump if they're on the back paddles versus a little bit more difficult if they're on the bumpers instead. Now that's all for today's video. If you are interested in learning more about Apex movement, especially if you're on a controller, we do host an in-person movement course every single Thursday night inside of our Discord server, where we open up a private lobby in Apex and we walk you through each step to completing a certain mechanic. As well, on our website, we upload a movement guide every single week. And then that way, when you come into the class, there's gonna be a new mechanic for you to practice. And of course, there's gonna be a coach in person with you the entire time. So if you do start struggling, the coach will be be able to walk over to you and help you out with that issue. If you're interested in learning more about our weekly classes, make sure to head on over to my website, thedistrict.pro, or click the link in the description down below. Your first month is half off, and if you ever miss a course, you'll always be able to go to the website and watch the recordings of each class. If you haven't already, make sure to check this video out here, and that's going to be all for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one. Later.